Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we've got a really unique build. We've got an old vintage Matchbox tow truck. I remember having several of these when I was a kid, and this was definitely a must-have, especially if you were playing out in your backyard in the dirt and stuff like that. But I got a hold of a bunch of these trucks, and I wanted to do something special to these for a long time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down. We're going to give it a brand new paint job in Spectre Flame paint. Put on some different decals and we're going to do a wheel swap. Now, don't be alarmed the folks out there that are purists. You know, you're going to ruin an old classic and like that. Like I said, I've got several of these and it's my truck. But I wanted you to see that you could definitely make some of these old Matchbox cars look really, really cool. I've already got the truck drilled apart, so let's go ahead and get it apart and evaluate what we have here. Now, I got a whole bunch of other Matchbox trucks and stuff like that, like I told you, and I'm definitely going to be doing some restorations on some of those, but it's going to be a lot of fun when I get to that point. So, damn, that's a stubborn thing. Well, we're going to strip the paint down on this. Now... In my opinion, there's a lot of logos and stuff that are way overused when it comes to die-cast cars. One of them being BP. The other being Golf, uh, Moon Eyes. There's just so many that are way overused. And I look forward to when I can change out from one of those. Let's continue. All right, we need to take off the wheels here. Now, I don't have the skill that some of these guys have, like Marty's Matchbox Makeovers or Lee at Time Riders Wee Little Cars. Doing the best I can to get this thing off. Now, I want to save the wheels, but I just happen to hack the heck out of this one. But the other three are fine. And I'm going to replace them anyways, but like I said, I wanted to save these. But, hey, I've got three more that I can use for a future project. It takes time to master these skills, folks. And if you don't do it all the time, then it's going to show when you go to take things apart or put them back together. But again, like I said, it takes practice. And this is something that I definitely plan on practicing. There we go. We got the wheels off. Now we just got to get the paint stripped up. I'm going to dip the body and the, and the bed in the embalming fluid. Since I'm doing a color change, I'm going to make sure that everything is coated here so we can get all that paint off. Like I said, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Now, if this procedures and steps that I'm offering you here are things that if you decide to restore a Matchbox car, then this is something that you can definitely do and the procedures here would still apply. Now here's the wheels that I decided to put on. Now the axle's too short, but you notice that there's a spacer there in the back. So what I'm going to wind up doing is using my Dremel and grinding down that spacer so the wheels will fit that much better. I got these titanium bits, and you can get these off my Amazon Marketplace page. There's a link in the comments. Now, they're very reasonably priced. They're only like $15 or $18 or something. But you get a complete assortment of bits that you can use for different applications. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell to be alerted to any future videos that come out. And if you do subscribe, hey folks, it's free. You're watching the videos anyways. You know that there's a statistic that I look at under analytics that over 51% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. So please subscribe. You're going to watch the videos anyways, or at least I hope you will. But then you'll be alerted to when they come out, and then you can watch them at your convenience. So again, please folks, subscribe to the channel. You won't be sorry. Once we get this ground down, then we're going to take a file and we're going to smooth it out a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now we just got to do the other side. Let's grind that bad boy down. 
Yeah, these Dremel bits are nice for sure. I'm using the table as a nice level surface to try and keep my grinding down and keeping it fairly flat so I don't have too much to file off when I'm done. Plus it helps you stabilize the Dremel in your hand, again, so you're not wavering all over the place. And these bits, man, they chew metals and they come off quick. All right, let's smooth it out with the file. Since we were level with the table, it doesn't take too much to do. Looking good. Now let's see if the tires fit. Okay, there's enough axle there. Put a wheel on. That looks pretty good. I like that better than just those little plastic black tires that Matchbox offered years ago. And these are real riders. That looks pretty awesome. Just the wheel swap alone is worth it. Looking good. Let's move on. Now we're going to polish up the front of the truck. And we're going to use Flitz, of course. Flitz is a fantastic product, folks. And Flitz offers a whole array of other products, too. Now, the nice folks at Flitz love how I use Flitz in my videos and share it with you guys to show you what a wonderful product it truly is. Now, they have offered me an exclusive to my viewers on this channel. If you go to the Flitz website, and I'll leave a link in the comments section, when it asks for it, type in the code GRAVEYARD. All you have to do is type in the code GRAVEYARD, and you will receive a 20% off your total purchase of any Flitz products from the Flitz webpage. It doesn't do any good if you go to Amazon or anything else because the code won't work. So you got to go to the Flitz website. So what a great offer, huh? Type in the word graveyard in the code section when it asks for it, and you're going to get 20% off your order. How cool is that? Thank you so much, the folks at Flitz, and what a great product it is. Let's finish polishing this bad boy up. Man, I'm so excited for the offer from Flitz for you guys. That's fantastic. And, uh, hey, like I said, you're going to be getting a great product and 20% off, too. But, like I said, you got to go to the Flitz webpage. And there will be a link at the front of this video. That's looking excellent. Just make sure you get everything. And if you need a little bit more Flitz, put it on there. That is looking so sweet. Get all the little details and everything. Now the reason I'm polishing this front end up so much is because we're going to paint this in Spectre Flame. I've been wanting to do this to a Matchbox truck for a very, very long time. That is looking absolutely sweet. Let's go ahead and move on. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard... Now let's paint the back end of the truck. We're going to paint the box in opaque acrylic that I got from the Redline Shop. Check out the complete line of products from the Redline Shop at www.redlineshop.com where red lines come to life. And they do have a big selection of products, not just the Spectre Flame paints and the opaque paints. They've got wheels. They've got hoods, they've got glass, they've got decals, they've got tools, they've got replacement engines. Please check out the Redline shop, you won't be sorry. They've got a incredible line of products to help you restore your Redlines. And a lot of these things apply over into other cars too, not just Redlines. Now this paint is going on beautiful. And you just put the mist coats on, like, you, like I told you in prior videos and then slowly build up the layers. Now here we're putting on 
the Spectre Flame paint on the front of the truck. And I decided here to go with a red. This is going to be really nice. You know, like I said before, there's a lot of products on the Hot Wheels cars and the Matchbox cars and like that that are way overused, in my opinion. I mean, they look cool and they're a lot of fun, but man, let, let's have some new stuff. I just get tired of seeing Golf and, and BP and Moon Eyes and, and some of these other ones that you see all the time. And this is why I like to change things up a bit and change the game and have a little bit more fun with it. Now, if you're looking for decals, you can go to Kenny Terry at KennyTerry.com or lately I've been getting some things from Second Chance Redlines. Vince Scott has a wonderful product and you should really check out what he has. Now being that this truck is older, I was wanting to put some decals on there that were more vintage than some of the newer ones. So you'll see up here in a little bit what I selected to go with this red paint and it actually turned out pretty cool. Man, that Spectre Flame Red is looking fantastic. I'm going to let that set overnight and harden up. And then we're going to put some decals on this bad boy and finish up this job. Let's move on. Here I got some decals to put on the truck. And what I decided to use here was Texaco. If I can keep a hold on these decals, I'm going to make it Texaco. Here we go. Trim the decal as closely as you can and still be able to control it. Get it on, get it centered where you want, and then using a Q-tip or the edge of a paper towel, go ahead and blot out the extra water and then smooth down the decal. It's exactly where I wanted it. Now let's put one on the other side. Same process. Go ahead and put a little bit of water on there. Let your decal soak for about 10 to 15 seconds at the most. Now don't let it soak too long because if you do, you're going to find your decal floating in the water. There we go. Make sure you get it straightened up. Get those big meat claws in the way. Dang. The more you mess with it, the more it seems it doesn't want to cooperate, right? There we go. There we go. Leave it alone now. Okay, use your Q-tip to blot out the excess water. Now later on, you can go back over this with some Microset. So if there's any areas that it needs to conform to, it'll fill in nicely. That looks super sweet. Once you get to a point though, stop messing with it like I keep on messing with it here. Same thing. It's already set. Quit messing with it. Okay. I'm really bad at that. Oh, I can move it just a little more. Well, yeah, you're going to mess it up too. That looks good. Stop it. <laughs> All right, that's good. Leave it alone. Let's move on. Looking sweet. I love how the moonlight shines over the mausoleum. <laughs> now here's something I've been wanting to show you. These old Matchbox trucks have got some really cool details on here. Now... This here says KEW, which I'm not sure what it means. I really need to do the research on this. And Dodge. Now, instead of getting in there with some paint, I'm going to use the very edge of, a, of a, an X-Acto blade here. And I'm just going to scrape off that little bit of red paint that's on there. So the letters are going to look like they're chrome. Look how nice that looks. And I didn't have to paint it. I'm sorry, I didn't know what the KEW stood for, and I should have looked it up first. That logo's looking good. 
we still got some things on the front end I want to do. I want to scrape off like around the grill and the headlights and like that. And around the other logo on the other side where it says Dodge. But man, that looks pretty sharp. Well, we're also going to do the door handle too. You got to be really careful here though, folks, because, you know, you could scratch off more than you want to. That's nice. I didn't want to put the paint on there, you know, so I was kind of fretting about what I wanted to do. It's kind of like trying to paint a vehicle with a mop. <laughs> and you just put way too much paint on there, and it fills in the little centers of the letters, and it just looks like crap. So, but that looks pretty sharp. Okay, like I said, here's the wheels that came on the truck. And we're going to put on these new wheels. Again, I had to grind down the little spacer there. Now, these wheels look pretty good. And I'm putting them on there, and they're looking sweet. Those are going to look really nice when I get them on there. Oh, and then I dropped one. Okay. Now, I couldn't find the other wheel. It rolled under my desk somewhere. I looked and I looked and I couldn't find it. So I had to come up with another set of wheels to fit on the truck. And you'll see when I go to do the reveal. Now here's the front of the truck. I did the scraping down there like I said. I detailed it up. I got some Dodge custom rims and I put those on the base instead of the other ones I wanted. The glass is polished up. The globe is polished up. We got the hook for the tow truck section. Let's put it all together and have our reveal. And here's what we started with. This Matchbox Dodge tow truck from the UK. And I still got some others I'm going to completely restore as original. But this one here, I've been wanting to do something with some Spectre Flame paint. And some different wheels because I know that this vehicle can look better in my opinion. So we took the truck apart completely. We stripped it down. We fitted it for some new tires. We pulled some Spectre Flame paint from the Redline shop. And we painted the front of the truck. We painted the back end white. Now I wish I had some other decals but I didn't at the time. To put some more lettering or something on there. But we turned it from a BP into a Texaco tow truck and man I tell you it was a lot of fun these are the builds that I really really enjoy and you folks can do this too if you happen to have any other brand of cars or trucks or anything like that and this is what we got to look how nice that truck turned out it's absolutely stunning now you can go through and you can make any kind of tow truck you want to be it Texaco or BP or Sinclair or Sunoco, or Mobile, or anything like that, folks. Just uh, get the proper decals. Now, I got my decals from Second Chance Redlines, and they offer a sheet of vintage decals from oil and gas companies, and you can, and they come with all of those that I just mentioned, plus some more standard oils on there. And you can make a really, really cool tow truck. Now, this looks excellent. I'm very happy and very proud of this truck. And it was a lot of fun. And you guys can take any old vehicle you want to, freshen it up, modern it up, hot rod it up, whatever you want to do, and make it look cool for your collection. And that's the best part about this. I had a great time, and then I'm, I'm probably going to do a different one with another Matchbox truck, a big old uh, international pickup, I think, that they have there. And I'm going to do something with that, too. But... Like I said, man, this was so much fun. And I look forward. Now, if you guys happen to do one, send me a photograph. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see your work. I want to thank the members of my Patreon team. And I haven't put anything up here in a few videos, but I can't do this without them. They, they help me out with a small subscription fee. And it helps buy my supplies that I use to make the videos for you. Now, folks, there is a link in the comment section for the Patreon team. 
I've had a few folks here because of the COVID pandemic recently had to back out of the Patreon team because times are tough. But folks, I could use your help. And any small donation can definitely help. So please check out the link in the comment section. Please become a member of the Patreon team. This is what keeps my videos going. And again, I could use your help and thank you so much in advance. You get to watch videos in advance and you get to have one-on-ones with me for your own diecast hobby. So please check out the Patreon link in the comments section. Thank you so much today for joining me on Diecast Graveyard. That Matchbox Resto Mod was a fantastic build and I really, really enjoyed it. We've got a whole bunch more videos coming up in the future here. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Have a great day and a wonderful 2021 to you and your family. Cheers.